everybody, I'm Oliver, and today I'm gonna to be teaching you how to use the API Freshwater Master Test Kit. So let's go ahead and jump right into this. If you're joining me, this is the third video on my series of how to keep your very first aquarium. And we're gonna be talking about how to use the API Freshwater Master Test Kit. Now, if you wanna just learn the test kit and not the rest of the videos, just stick around for this one. But if you're new and you don't know much about aquariums, I recommend checking out those other videos too. They're gonna to be linked in the playlist down below. So when I first purchased my API Master Test Kit, I was very intimidated as there is a lot of terms that I'm just not aware of. And it was very daunting at first and I was skeptical and it just seemed too overly complicated. And that's what I want to solve today for you and make it so simple that you could walk away knowing all of the details. So this test comes with a pH range, a high pH range, two ammonia bottles, a nitrite and a nitrate bottle as well. And it's gonna be able to test all of those in your aquarium's water. It also comes with these little test vials that help you measure and test out the kits. And it comes with this pamphlet that teaches you how each test kit works and it has a chart on the back to use the test kit. So if you forget any steps in this video, you can just check it out on the little pamphlet here and it teaches you how to use each specific test kit part. So if you're like me, when I first started my API master test kit in my aquarium journey, I didn't know what some of the terms meant like nitrate and nitrite. And don't worry, I'm gonna explain those in this video to help make them make more sense. So first off, we're gonna wanna measure the pH and the pH determines how acidic or how alkaline your water is and it's gonna determine what type of fish you want to keep in your aquarium. If your natural water is a very alkaline, uh, alkaline base water type, you're gonna to wanna to probably keep some African cichlids or some fish that prefer that over the opposite of very acidic water type fish. So first off, I'm gonna go ahead and fill up our test tube to the desired line. Now that we have our test tube up to the desired line, let's go ahead and add our pH liquid. So now since our bottle says to add three drops of solution, I'm gonna go ahead and add exactly three drops. There we go. Gonna put the cap on the little test tube and the cap on the solution. Now I'm gonna give the substance a good mixture, good mix. We don't wanna let it mix, get all the particles around, make sure it can give us an accurate reading. So now that we have our reading, let's go ahead and compare it to the chart. So my water is already a very, very alkaline base water. So it's gonna exceed our regular pH chart. And as you can tell, according to the graph, it's 7.6. So if you have the most in terms of pH, you're gonna wanna switch over to the next solution, which is gonna be the high range pH solution. But if your pH scored somewhere in here, then you know that your pH is a 6.0, 6.4, or anything in between, and we can accurately judge that your water is a little acidic if it's in this area. But since mine's alkaline, we're gonna go ahead and have to test with the high range pH test solution. Now, we are going to need to dump out this, and we're gonna add some more of the tank water. Now we're gonna add five drops of the high test pH range solution. Perfect. And let's go ahead and give it a good mix. Now we have our pH solution. So let's go ahead and test it up with our chart. And here we're gonna test with the high H pH range. Gets the white background. We're sitting at about a 7.8 pH. And that's how you test your pH. So your pH is gonna be very indicative of what a lot of your other aquarium fish and plants can be because you don't want to keep a very acidic fish in a very high alkaline water. The fish just would not thrive well and vice versa. If you don't want to keep a alkaline fish with a very acidic water as it's just not going to correlate together. So to sum that up, once you've figured out your pH, then start to do some more research on what type of fish and plants you want to buy. Now, there are ways to change your pH to bring it up or to lower it. If you wanna make your pH lower, go ahead and add some tannin rich things like leaves and driftwoods. These are gonna help leach more acidic tannins into your water column. But if you want to raise the alkalinity in your aquarium, I recommend adding some crushed coral as this is gonna help bring it up. Okay, so let's go ahead and now let's talk about nitrate. These little two bottles right here are gonna test the nitrate levels. And you may be asking, what is nitrate? Nitrate are one of the three byproducts of the waste in your aquarium, which include nitrate, nitrites, and ammonia. Too much levels of nitrates will be harmful to your fish, 
and I'm gonna get into how much is too much. So for nitrate, we want to make sure that our uh, nitrate levels do not get past 40 parts per million, which is this little shade of red right here. If you have an established aquarium with that, with too much nitrates in there above 40 parts per million, it means you just need to do a nice water change to help lower those levels. But if you have a newly trying to newly cycle an aquarium with that level of nitrates, it's a great sign that your cycle is working. But if your ammonia levels are above zero and your nitrite levels are above zero, it means your tank's not cycled yet. I'll get into it towards the end of this video. Stay tuned. But let's go ahead and test out our nitrites. So right before we test out our nitrites, we need to shake these containers a lot. Like I'm talking 30 seconds each bottle. Really wanna make sure our solution is nice and mixed in. Without it, we get an improper reading, which could be harmful to our fish. So once we've given these guys a good shake, let's go ahead and fill up our test tube. Alrighty, now that our test tube is filled, let's go ahead and add our first solution. So this is the first solution, number bottle one right here, we're gonna to wanna to add 10 drops. It's very important that you use these in the right order. And just to make sure, I wanna give it just another shake. We really wanna shake this up, really don't want any bad readings. And let's add our 10 drops. Now that we've added our 10 drops, let's go ahead and add our cap. All right, so now let's go ahead and shake up our test tube. We really wanna make sure this gets mixed in really, really well. All right, sweet. Now that we have our test tube, let's go ahead and bust out our second bottle of nitrate solution. Again, we're gonna add 10 drops to the same bottle and we're gonna wanna give this a really good shake. We wanna shake it for at least 30 seconds. Really make sure that our, the components are nice and mixed in together well. Um, if not, we would get inaccurate readings, which for this test for nitrites, it's very important you get the accurate reading. All right, sweet. Now that it's all mixed up, let's go ahead and add our 10 drops. Awesome, now let's go ahead and add our cap and our test tube cap. And now we're gonna wanna give this a nice little mix. And now we're gonna wanna let this sit for about five minutes just to let the mixture really set in well. So we're gonna put this over here. And if you're a beginner and you don't know anything about plants or water changes, stick around as I have got some more videos in the description down below where I talk about water changes and plants. To get the most accurate reading when testing your nitrates is by actually testing it outdoors in sunlight as this is the best light to use when testing nitrates out. So we're gonna line it up with the graph here and we look to be at about a bright yellow to a slightly orange, which means we are in the safe. But if your nitrates are here at 40 ppm or lower or, or higher, it means that you need to do a water change on your tank immediately as these levels will be harmful to your livestock. Next, let's go ahead and test out our nitrites. Let's go ahead and add our nitrite solution, just five drops. Let's go ahead and shake this solution up and let's test it. So now let's do our reading and it shows we have zero, which is a great score. The goal of our nitrate levels is to be at zero. If you have nitrates, I recommend doing a water change. Now let's go ahead and test our ammonia levels. So when it comes to ammonia, we're gonna wanna have very little to low levels of ammonia in our aquarium as ammonia is gonna harm our fish. So in order to remove this, we can add live plants and we could do more frequent water changes. Our test tube bottle is filled. Let's go ahead and add eight drops of the bottle one of the ammonia mixture. Give it a good shake. And let's add bottle two of our ammonia mixture. Again, eight drops. Once again, another shake. Now let's go test our liquid. So here, let's test our ammonia. Again, we want to shoot for that zero part per million range. And it looks like we got it. If you have too high of ammonia, anything past the yellow and light green marks, I recommend doing a water change to help reduce your ammonia. Once you are done using your test tubes, be sure to wash them off with some water and dry them out completely before putting them back up with their lids on. So that is how you use the API Freshwater Master Test Kit. So here's how to determine whether or not your aquarium is cycled or not. So in order to know if your aquarium is cycled or not, we're gonna want to have a zero PPM of ammonia, zero PPM of nitrite, and anywhere from zero to 20 PPMs of nitrate. If any of these don't fit underneath that category, that means your tank is just not cycled yet. And so that is how you know if your tank is cycled 
and how to use the API Master Test Kit. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it gave you a lot of information about your aquarium. And I want you to check out this next video if you're part of our series, part four, how to clean your aquarium. I will see you in that video. Until next time, have a good one.